finally had a good poop this morning. It's gonna be a good day. I'm Rubina and I'm Layla. Welcome back to our channel, Nutrition Unpacked. I was this close to saying elementary. Right I was right. really, really close. I okay. caught myself mid sentence. Yeah. I was very proud of myself. How was your third week of paleo? It's getting better. I will say, I don't think I'm really thinking about it as much anymore. No, it just occurred to me. I actually haven't even thought about bread. It actually hasn't been something that I've consciously been missing. Like like first week, I was thinking about it a lot and very much wanting it. But this week, I don't know. I think I've just been really on some level enjoying the foods that I have been having. It's only when like I'm being offered things where I'm like, no, I can't have that, that I'm thinking about it. But honestly, it's been a lot better. But that being said, I'm really looking forward to eating bread again. I know, I know. I am I am kind of like right now thinking of like a list of things that I do want to eat when I'm not doing this. And I do think if I was just doing this for myself and not for this channel where I had to be kept accountable to like all of you and to you, I would have cheated by now. I was really close to having cheese this past week. My sleep quality has been really bad the last few weeks. Um, I'm not going to blame it on paleo. I don't think it has anything to do with the foods or anything. I think it's just a coincidence. This morning, I think for like the last hour, the entire time I was thinking about cheese. I could not stop thinking about cheese. Even yesterday, there was a part of me like, I know there's cheese in the fridge. I could just go have some. It wouldn't be a big deal. And like, that's true. It literally wouldn't be a big deal. But I'm, I'm really trying to see this thing through. I have, you know, about a week and a half left. So I know I can make it. The cheese cravings are real. I like cheese, but I don't normally crave cheese. I've never craved cheese before. I don't know if it's because you put that in my head, but I've... Don't been, blame me. I'm gonna blame you. I've just been like, honestly, I kind of want some cheese and I don't know what it is. And all these nutritional yeast people mm. were like, nutritional yeast tastes like cheese. Stop lying. Stop lying. It's, yeah. it's like a vegan like propaganda. I think that if it's maybe if you're a vegan and you haven't had cheese in like 10 years or something and then you forget what cheese tastes like, you see the yellow and you're like, that yellow is kind of like cheese yellow. Tastes that's, like cheese. That's literally what I thought when we had those power curls last week and you were like, these are so good. I'm like, I think you <laughs> forgot what chips taste Honestly, like. Honestly, they're delicious. Are you already eating it? Yeah, it actually slaps. I like this. This is good. I would eat this even if I wasn't paleo. <laughs> Not that much flavor though, hey? No, but I like it. It's spicy. This is spicy salsa. I did have gum one day by accident. Someone offered me a piece of gum and I had it. You traitor. I, I just like, I didn't even think about it. So I do apologize for that, everyone. Um, I have sinned and please forgive me. Forgive me. For my sins. Dr. Cordain. Dr. Cordain. I have sinned. Yeah. Oh, love Catholic jokes. Okay, let's get into it. Let's talk mm -hmm. about salt or specifically sodium. The reason we're not allowed to add um, salt to any of our foods is because of that dang sodium. Guys, I figured it out. I figured it out. The key to paleo, red pepper flakes. If you're trying to cut back on your salt or you know, not add any salt at all because you're doing this stupid paleo diet, put this on everything and I guarantee you, you're gonna hate your life a lot less. And also, according to Dr. Cardain, also a big reason why we can't have any of this cheese. I think it's actually the saltiness of the cheese that I'm mm. craving. I, I think I want a bread and cheese sandwich as my first meal after paleo. Like a grilled cheese or just like- No, just like straight up like a French mm. baguette <gasps> with like sliced cheese. Okay, no, I do have to admit, I was at Costco yesterday and the Costco baguettes, mm. I was like, with this butter on them. Mm. So, sodium. Okay. I think sodium is one of those kind of hot topic nutrients. There's been like a really big push in public health to get people to reduce their sodium. At the same time though, we've been seeing in a lot of health spheres, people talking about the fact that sodium is not that bad for you. And you know, we should be increasing sodium and perhaps, you know, eating low level sodium is what's bad for you. So where does the truth lie? Ultimately, sodium is actually a mineral that our body needs. We do need to get it from our food and it plays a lot of really important functions in our body. Sodium does play a role in fluid balance inside and outside of our cells. It's involved in maintaining blood pressure. And believe it or not, it actually plays a really important role in maintaining membrane potential in order for our nerve cells to communicate with each other, in order for our muscles to contract. And that also includes your heart actually beating, we need sodium. Funnily enough, which I didn't even know this until I did the research for this video, with 
nutrient absorption. I'm glad you didn't know that either because I was also like, oh. Yeah, I'm like, wait, I studied nutrition for six years and didn't know that. That did not come up. Apparently, sodium helps with the absorption of certain nutrients like chloride, which normally gets sodium and chloride together, uh, in the intestine, which are amino acids, glucose, and water. So why are we even talking about this? It's because Dr. Cordain has a very strong perspective that we should not be adding any salt to our food. He feels that we can get all the sodium that we need from the naturally occurring sodium that's in the foods that we are already allowed to eat. He says, quote, the electrolyte sodium is one of the most misunderstood nutrients. It is critical to survival and has an important relationship with potassium. While hunter-gatherers consumed 1,000 milligrams or less a day, a typical modern diet often exceeds 3,000 milligrams and is linked to almost all chronic inflammatory conditions, including hypertension, heart disease, cancer, and autoimmunity. Bold, bold, bold. Bold claims. Let's compare that with what maybe the mainstream or general public health guidelines are. And to be honest, there's actually a reasonable amount of agreement. So a lot of health bodies or organizations, including Health Canada, World Health Organization, or the American Heart Association, they all tend to be having similar recommendations, which is to limit our sodium intake to 2,300 milligrams per day, and actually even encourage, maybe even aiming for around 1,500 milligrams a day for adults. Dr. Cordain says on his website that he's gotten a lot of heat from the paleo community for his stance on sodium and for being in agreement and in alignment with like these bigger bodies in terms of encouraging people to reduce their sodium. So I think that kind of speaks to the mentality of a lot of people who are doing these kind of diets. And it seems as though there's this idea that we need to always be going against the norm and the government. It's almost like a conspiracy mm -hmm. theory is like what the government says is trying to kill you. That being said, you know, we talked about the guidelines being 1500 milligrams as maybe best case scenario and definitely don't exceed 2300 milligrams where do most people stand? It seems like within the Canadian population, the average intake is actually around 3,200 milligrams per day. And it seems like across the board, across all ages, it seems like males seem to eat more sodium. What's interesting is, you know, if you're trying to cut back on your sodium or your salt, I think often the instinct is to maybe not use as much salt when you're cooking or to, you know, not add salt at the table. And while I think those initiatives that certainly, I think, make intuitive sense, you might be surprised to hear that the majority of sodium in Canadian diets actually come from processed foods. So actually over 70% of Canadian sodium sodium intake comes from processed foods, while under 10% comes from either cooking or from adding salt at the table. And this pattern is seen pretty much across Western countries. In the States, very similar, above 70%, close, sometimes closer to 80% of the sodium comes from processed foods. In the UK, very similar things as well. And that's why a lot of the public health initiatives have really been focusing on industry and focusing on getting people to cook foods at home, focusing on getting industry to voluntarily reduce the sodium content of their food. We can see that in Canada, it is having somewhat of an impact in that there are slight trends and decreases in sodium intake, but it's not what had, what had been hoped when they first came up with these legislation. Believe it or not, the food group or food category that contributes most to this are bread and bread products. And this isn't necessarily because there's just a lot of sodium in bread. It's just that bread products, I think, make up such a significant part of North American's diet. You think of like toast for breakfast, sandwich for lunch, maybe a dinner roll with dinner. It yeah. all ends up adding up, even like pasta and stuff, uh, processed meats, all of those things are really big contributors to sodium. Yeah, and that's a very good point is like when we look at the other sources of sodium to the diet, typically they're like, you know, deli meats, which we know are really salty or like things like pre-prepared pasta, frozen meals, canned soups. But then it's just because we're eating so, so, so much bread that it's the, actually the biggest contributor of sodium to the diet. I mean, of course, the paleo diet explicitly tells us not to eat any of those foods. So I think just by doing the paleo diet, you are eliminating a lot of those big players that are contributing to your sodium intake. Absolutely. No processed foods, no grains, no dairy. So I think the next question is, you know, we're, we're talking about the idea of limiting sodium, possibly being beneficial to health, but, but we also talked about in the beginning how we actually do need sodium for our bodies to function. So how much sodium do we need, especially given the fact that, so we haven't been adding salt to any of our foods. So a part of us, I think we were worried or concerned or we were the thought went through our minds like, are we actually going to be getting enough sodium? Like, is it actually possible to get enough sodium just through the sodium that's naturally occurring in foods? And honestly, like I work out pretty often. I'm just about to head out the door to go to the gym after work. 
uh and i'm so hungry and that's the thing with paleo is that it's really hard to find like quick little snacks everything is like a super involved meal to eat before working out is really hard because typically you know more uh, refined carbohydrates are more easily digested so i can eat it before i go to the gym and then as soon as i get there it's already digested out of my stomach but here anything i eat whether it's like fruit or nuts or anything just kind of heavy and it sits and I don't want to be throwing up all over my rolling partners so I guess I'll just go hungry. I was worried like from sweating from leaving the gym or jiu-jitsu that I was not gonna get enough sodium so we actually decided to track our intake for one day which I've never done before. I think I have done it before just for like fun but also like I'm like bad at remembering to do stuff. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to make my lunch. Um, I have a few different things here. Um, so I made these meatballs, which are going to be hard to predict what's in them. I'm going to weigh them out anyway, and I know what I put in them. So let's kind of estimate from there. And then I'm going to make a Greek salad with lettuce in it and like some other stuff. I know Greek salad doesn't have lettuce in it, but unfortunately I can't put like half the ingredients in it. So I don't know. They're Greek meatballs and I just want to call this a Greek salad. Leave me be. I felt like an absolute psychopath mm -hmm. measuring out mm -hmm. my fruit. I was there with my scale being like, okay, 28 grams of olive oil all right that's 13 and I, I was making like salad dressings and stuff yeah. like that too so i'm like 13 grams of parsley i was taken aback by how much naturally occurring sodium i'm actually getting i tracked for one day which let's be real that's not considered best practice in terms of getting <laughs> yes. a sense of nutritional intake uh but at least that one day which was this past wednesday i had about 800 milligrams of sodium yeah for just from naturally occurring for, sources mm -hmm. and i had a, just over 500 almost 600 milligrams of sodium i was surprised by the amount as well and especially because like where when we talk about you know people are going way over their sodium intakes and it's mostly because of processed foods i think that gives me a better picture of like how much processed foods people are eating you might be wondering okay well are you guys not getting enough is there a risk and honestly generally the consensus is that your body is very good at regulating its sodium levels so there's never really been a concern with people getting too little sodium from the diet it's recognized by most health bodies that you can just eat the sodium that you get from your diet and be perfectly fine um going back to dr cordine's argument of looking at hunter gatherer tribes there's been several studies done in different uh, rural populations throughout Brazil, Kenya, and Papua New Guinea. And some of those groups have about 400 milligrams of sodium per day, and they are a-okay and are way better, doing way better than us. Not just because of the sodium, probably just lifestyle diet as a whole. Even though they're very active, there's not really concern about sodium intake, even at those very low levels. Dr. Cordain is actually mm -hmm. going against the grain of a lot of his, not specifically his paleo followers, but paleo followers in general, because there has this, been this big shift to increase sodium recommendations and saying that even the 2300 milligrams is bad for you and we should be having more. And there's this claim that there's this J-shaped curve and where people who have low sodium intakes are sick and people who have high sodium intakes are sick, but really the, the best amount of sodium you should be having is between 3000 and 6000 milligrams per day. There are some studies that do show this. However, these studies are not the best quality studies. When you look at research that uses the gold standard measures, you do not see this at all. You do not see a J-shaped curve. Generally, we do see a linear relationship where after an intakes of 2,300, sometimes 1,500 milligrams per day, we see an increase in blood pressure. We see an increase in cardiovascular disease. I described it as a linear relationship. I mean, does that mean that we need to go as close to zero as possible? You know, as we said in the beginning, sodium is an essential nutrient that we do need to get from our diet. It plays a lot of important functions in our body. And ultimately, in terms of, you know, what's the best amount of sodium to take, we actually don't really have a concrete answer to that. And that's just because the research the lowest end seems to be intakes of around 1500 milligrams. I think just in real life out there, it's just very difficult to actually have realistic intake that's below the 1500 milligrams. So we just don't have that data, but that still seems to be a safe range to be where that, that level is not necessarily associated with higher risks for things like cardiovascular disease, cancers, or all cause mortality. 2300 milligrams of sodium, what that looks like is about one teaspoon of salt. So, I mean, really, it's not a whole lot to work with. When we're looking at what the governments are doing to help people reduce their sodium intake, it's largely all focusing on processed foods. If people focus on reducing their processed food intake and cooking more at home, I know that's not feasible for everyone. That might be the best way to get your sodium intake below that 2300 milligram number. So when we were tracking this past week, there was one thing that really stood out to me, and that was that my calcium intake was really, really low. 
And really when you think about it, it makes perfect sense. I mean, I think for most people, dairy is the biggest source of calcium. And of mm -hmm. course that's completely gone for my diet at this point. Other big sources of calcium in diets are like legumes and stuff like that. You can get calcium from a lot of vegetables, but it tends to be like less bioavailable. I was at about 66% of the amount that you're required to have each day. My intake for that day at least was under 30% of my daily needs. I was at around 28%. I will say, I think, I mean, so there are certain vegetables that are better sources of calcium. So things like bok choy and broccoli. I have been eating a lot of broccoli in general. I think that that one day I just happened mm. to not. So I'm gonna make a like a very conscious effort to kind of make sure I am including broccoli every day. Yeah, I will say, cause I was at like 200 and something milligrams and then I ate my broccoli for dinner and I was at, got to like 600 and something. So broccoli is a big Big one and it's like we're not saying that it's impossible to get to the amount of calcium when you're doing the paleo diet it just takes a lot more conscious effort you know the paleo diet if i look at a lot of my nutrients i'm like hitting my fiber i'm hitting my vitamin c like 500 percent the vitamin c i'm, I'm killing the vitamin c uh -huh. game I'm, I'm killing the protein game too i'm not which is surprising yeah 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 i'm like i'm killing all these different things but then i think that there are some key nutrients that we really need to talk about and if people are taking up a, a paleo diet there's a few things to pay attention to next week is our last week oh this is our God. last week of doing paleo and i'm so freaking I excited i'm so excited i'm so excited last week doing paleo we're gonna be true paleo though true paleo yeah, for valentine's it. day on Tuesday. We're doing it? Yeah, we're doing it. I'm doing it. I don't know. Okay. It's up okay, to you. So cancel my dinner plans? Okay. No, don't cancel your dinner plans. Then how are we going to do true paleo? Where, where are you going? We're going to go to sushi. But I, I was going to go to a place where they do yeah, like... Yeah, sashimi. Uh, as long as you don't put this, this soy sauce on it. It's just like fish. <laughs> Why would I do that yeah. then? It's good. I love it. Without soy sauce? Yeah. You have not eaten it yeah, without soy sauce. I absolutely have. I absolutely have. Now I kind of just want to save it. Maybe I'll just, we'll just go the next week. No, okay. I'm not going to be interrupting your marriage. You're breaking up our marriage. Can this channel is <laughs> breaking up my marriage. Wow. I'm sorry, Rory. Wait, what are we talking about? I'm, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I, we, had, we were in a friend's place for dinner who's like slaving away making yes. us a paleo meal right now. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, though, Adam always puts together the most elaborate feast for us but this time we've come with like an extra added challenge and be like okay adam we're doing paleo luckily he is a dietitian yes and he's chill so hopefully he gets it you know what you'll meet him hi everyone we are here with our friend and fellow dietitian adam who is so graciously making us a paleo friendly meal and hosting yeah. us at his home and we need to show you these paleo <laughs> tortillas the tortilla stack and then we go we have our chicken tinga yum yum Okay, this is actually at least it's so good. It's so good. It's the best paleo meal I've had Definitely. this whole time. Aww. I'm wearing either. No, Adam. <laughs> I go to Adam for all your paleo recipes. Right. You no, know, Cassie's back. Hi, Cassie. 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 Hi,